Hell Divers 2 just dropped a brand new patch and it is massive. Not only does it address changes to the base game, weapon tweaks and balances, but it also addresses a late game problem that people have just now been experiencing. So without further ado, let's dive right in and take a look. Let's discuss the overview of this patch. There have been balance changes to missions, stratagems, weapons, enemies, and Hell Divers. Of course, there's been general fixes and stability, but the biggest change for me that stands out is the increased level cap. Now that the game is aging like a fine wine, many seasoned hell divers are experiencing a new problem. And that is, what do they do once they had hit the main level cap of level 50? Other than having fun with this game, what else can they engage in? But good news, Arrowhead, like I said earlier, has increased the level cap from 50 to 150. This is massive news because we also get new titles as we unlock and climb the ranks. It would be cool to see new things to unlock with this as well. But as we know, things like stratagems and new weapons are usually tied to war bonds. And before we continue, I do want to talk about something in the end game that is still a problem. And that is earning way too many medals, requisitions, super credits, and of course, samples. What do you do with them once you have maxed out and purchased everything? Getting these new level caps is absolutely fantastic and I love just to see my number go up. In fact, me personally, I would like to see this go to an infinite number, but I also want to be able to do something with these other things that I have. As I look through the Discord and Reddit, other Helldivers have come up with pretty creative solutions. One of them that I like the most is actually a donation, where basically everything that you earn, you could put to like a donation fund and maybe once a week or possibly every 24 hours, it can unlock a temporary stratagem for all hell divers to use across the missions. Similar to when Arrowhead gives us a new weapon or mech to use as a fifth stratagem, it would be really cool to take this even further and have hell divers also contributing their own fronts to the home front. This could also make sense from a lore perspective, where hell divers pretty much have to also help fund the war effort, not just with their bodies, but also with the money they acquire. That's enough talk about level cap, let's talk about the gameplay now. They have added new planetary hazards. There are blizzards and sandstorms. So if you thought visibility was poor before, get ready to be hit by a sandstorm. The blizzards, I guess, are a little bit more forgivable because on cold planets, laser weapons don't build up heat as fast. It actually builds it up much slower being on a cold planet. So I'm all for it, but still, I think Helldivers has a visibility problem just in general. So although these planetary changes are a cool addition to the game, I just hope they're able to tweak enemy field of view and behavior so they are affected just like the player gets affected. Now let's talk about balancing for missions. Everyone's most hated mission is to retrieve the essential personnel. So what they have done here is they move the enemy enemy spawn points much further away from the objective to give players a more fair chance of defending the location. Not only that, they have also lowered the civilian requirements to complete the missions on higher difficulties. Even on difficulty 6 plus, especially fighting the bots, you kind of get rolled. And even if one player on your team is slacking, it can fail the mission for you. So it is great to see this mission get another tweak, which is cool. Then they have the destroy the command bunkers one. I remember the first time playing one of these missions, I was on a level 7 difficulty, and I was surprised that there was only one objective. But much like everything else, I just dove right in. I threw an orbital rail strike at it and to my surprise it blew it up in one shot and completely beat the mission all i had to do was extract and i still had like 35 minutes left on a level seven so now they've added it so it has more objective locations because the mission was too easy compared to other missions of that difficulty. And it can also now appear on operations from difficulty five and up, which I think makes a ton more sense. Another massive modification is to the operations. So they have halved the negative effects of operation modifiers that increase stratagem cooldown times or call-in times, which I am so thankful for because I hate that. It's one thing to get overwhelmed by a bunch of chargers and bile titans or to be swarmed by devastators and hulks, but I could always rely on my stratagems. So for me, if I was calling down something that normally takes one second to come in, and now it's taking five seconds, it kind of makes the whole operation foobar. And it was also not fun, which is the main problem. It also affected things like your weapons and backpack call downs. You can start a mission and throw out your autocannon and wait 20 seconds. 
and on some of these higher difficulty levels depending on where you drop down that can be a death sentence that now costs you probably now three to five additional lives between your all your teammates so i'm glad to see a change there which is excellent now let's talk about primary secondary and support weapon changes there are definitely some good news here but unfortunately there are some devastatingly bad news as well speaking of bad news up first is the arc thrower now unfortunately they said that there is a charging rate inconsistency so before other people were able to manipulate it and kind of just obliterate bug breaches and whatnot themselves, they have quote unquote fixed it saying it will now always take one second to charge a full shot. Not only that, another major problem is they reduce the distance of the arc thrower from 50 meters all the way down to 35. So you have to get much closer to use this thing. However, they did give it like a teeny tiny little thing and they increased the stagger force of the arc thrower. But still, I think this was a huge nerf to this weapon. And I really don't expect to see that many people using it moving forward, especially because there's so much better options now. It is unfortunate to see what happened to the arc thrower, but time will tell if that was a good decision or not. Up next is the guard dog. And we're not talking about the guard dog rover that shoots the laser. It's the guard dog that fires bullets. If you guys didn't know, the guard dog actually had finite amount of ammo. So if you've ever wondered why the dog just stopped shooting, that's why. It could be resupplied from supply boxes, and that is now the major change. So the guard dog now restores full ammo from supply boxes. Now, I don't know if that's just the supplies you call in or if that's also ammo boxes you find in missions. We still have to do some experimentation there. I do hope that it is the former. Up next, we have a massive change to the anti-material rifle. The damage has increased by 30%. I don't know if you guys have used the anti-material rifle in the past, but it was able to pretty much two-shot most things in the game. A Hulk or Hulk Scorcher, you could shoot it right in the eye slit two times and it would die. So now having a full damage increase by 30%, I fully expect to see many more Helldivers using this anti-material rifle. However, it still isn't made for blowing up objectives so other hell divers that are using the auto cannon might still find the auto cannon a better solution i'm just happy to see that another weapon is getting a buff so that there's just more things and more builds to do then we have the breaker incendiary so they've increased the damage per bullet from 15 to 20 per bullet which can be massive considering the next thing they changed was the fire damage per tick has increased by 50% from all sources. I don't know if this patch addresses it, but other people have found an issue with fire in general. Apparently, if you're not the host, the fire damage over time isn't working, but only working for hosts. So that does need to be explored there. Moving on, the Liberator Penetrator now has a full auto mode. In the past, I did use the Liberator Penetrator, but I was quick to jump to a conclusion saying that it was just a terrible gun not worth using. But now that it has a full auto mode, I am excited to get my hands on this and use it. The next buff is the Dominator. It increased the damage from 200 to 300 and also increased its stagger capability. So not only are you doing more damage, you are also able to stagger more enemies, which is exciting. Now we have a really interesting one, which is a change for the Diligence Counter Sniper. So they have increased the armor penetration from light to medium. And I think this is an enormous change for this rifle. The Diligence itself has way better handling than this Diligence Counter Sniper and more ammo. So if you're still a really good shot with this one and you're aiming for critical points, stick with using the Diligence. However, if you're someone that likes to engage from afar, but you can't always get those critical shots, it's now great to have a sniper rifle that isn't a call down weapon that now has medium armor penetration. I'm excited to see where this goes because I always thought the diligence counter sniper was just completely useless compared to the diligence. So this is exciting news. Now, unfortunately, we have a change to the slugger, which is devastating. The first thing it says, it reduces its stagger. And to me, that was the main reason to use the slugger. And it also reduced the damage from 280 down to 250. So not only have they reduced the ability for it to stagger, it reduced its damage, which is super sad. And that's not the only thing they changed too. They also reduced the demolition force, whatever that means. Possibly it's destructive power or if the pellets exploded on impact, but that is a pretty big change for the slugger. And lastly about the slugger, it says they fixed armor penetration tag in the menu. And speaking of tags, the slugger, the Liberator, Concussive, the Senator, all fixed incorrect armor penetration tags also in the menu. Up next is the Recoilless Rifle. An exciting change from this one, it increased the number of rockets you restore per supply box from two up to three. 
and that is the only change so thank goodness up next is the spear and when i first saw the spear on this list i was excited because i thought they fixed the dang lock on problem but that still hasn't been addressed but the spear increased the number of missiles you restore from supply boxes also now from one to two and lastly we have the heavy machine gun now this is an odd change considering it's one of the newest stratagems but they fix the highest fire rate, but they change the highest fire rate mode and reduce it from 1200 RPM down to a quote unquote more moderate 950. Now that is not the change that weapon needs. I, I think that weapon might need a complete change and overhaul because when you hear heavy machine gun, you expect it to take down heavily armored stuff. Not only does it have not enough ammo to do so, but you have to aim down sights and it is not doing armor penetration. So I believe that weapon might actually need a rework. Now we have the stratagems and they only have one listed, which is the Patriot exosuit. So it says rockets will now penetrate armor only on direct hit. And what that means is if you ever shot something and had like a glancing blow, now it's not gonna penetrate. It may still explode or bounce off, but now you have to be a little bit more precise when using the exosuit which is unfortunate because the exosuits themselves aren't really that powerful and you don't get a ton of rockets. So this is an unfortunate change. I would consider this to be a nerf, unfortunately, which is not the direction these exosuits need to go. Now, moving on, we have enemies talking about how there's a new enemy type for an automaton. But allegedly, we're supposed to be able to fight these walking Star Wars-esque AT-ATs and they have super armor and they have a turret on their top and they are massive. It's almost like a Bile Titan equivalent. So on this list for enemies, it says balancing adjustments have been made to chargers normal melee attack now does less damage against the exosuits and that's not their actual running thing that's if they got really close to it and they just swung one of their big meaty claws so i i guess that's good then they have bile spewers and nursing spewers this is amazing because in the list it says bile spewers and nursing spewers do less damage with their puke. Thank God, because these things are a menace to society, especially bile spewers. Not only do they have armor and they have much better tracking than nursing spewers, but if you got hit by one of those things, you were you were doomed. Up next is a change to the bile titan. So it says the bile titan can no longer be stunned. Now you're probably thinking stun grenades or other things, but if you've used a recoilless rifle, the new quasar cannon, or even an expendable, you'll notice when you shot it in the face or the sides, you could have stunned and throw it a little bit off balance and then your friend can do a follow-up attack. So this is interesting to see that they can no longer be stunned. So now make sure you time those 500 kilograms way better, Helldivers. Up next is a change to Shriekers. So it says Shriekers no longer create bug breaches. I was unaware that Shriekers could do that. So I, I'm, I'm glad to see that's not a thing anymore because they can fly. They don't need to be calling down bug breaches. And then finally now, Shriekers hitting you while they are dead now does significantly less damage. I think it was a callback to Starship Troopers when you shoot it down and it falls on you, but it really wasn't fun in the game when it happened once or twice, you're like, haha. But now as an actual game feature, it shouldn't be there. It should definitely do damage, but it shouldn't one shot kill you. So that is awesome that they changed that. Up next is actually a change to the Helldiver themselves. So it says heavy and medium armor protects better and now you take about 10% less damage than before while wearing heavy and about 5% less damage when wearing medium armor. Fortified commando and light armor is unchanged. So now it's even more viable to wear heavy and medium armor because honestly for me, I'm still rocking light armor just because I need to get away. I need to run away way faster and have more stamina. But for all you meaty hell divers out there, I'm glad that you've got this change right now because we don't have to worry about you guys at least getting one-shotted by a rocket. Now let's move on to fixes. A big big fix that they have done where there was an issue on the PS5 which would reset when the game was rebooted causing things like your loadouts and hints to reset which was super frustrating. I play on both PC and PS5 and it was super annoying to jump into the PS5 every single time and having to reload my stuff especially when you forget and you just drop down onto a planet with a starter loadout. They also mentioned that the enemies now properly target exosuits. So previously, many enemies effectively ignored the exosuit. Previously, many enemies effectively ignored exosuits if a Helldiver on foot was available for them to target, meaning the exosuit just had carte blanche to obliterate everything with those machine guns and rockets. So now be careful if you're using an exosuit because you're fair game for them as well. They also fix exosuits being able to fire their weapon while opening the mini map. And the Helldiver and the exosuit both had a bug that made them sometimes take explosion damage multiple times, making things like the automaton rockets to be too deadly. And this is now fixed. Now this is very interesting because it didn't seem like we should kind of die to a one-shot rocket, especially with heavy armor on. 
which made things like the Rocket Devastator and the normal Rocket Scout guy seem to kill you almost instantly, especially when you get shot from across the map. So this is extremely interesting because I know that people feel the automatons are way harder solely because of Rockets and Rocket Devastators. So this big change is gonna make a lot more people want to join the automaton front. This is a great change. Now, speaking of the automatons, the automaton enemy constellations that prefer to spawn more of a certain devastator type did not work and are now functioning as they should. This means that sometimes when playing against the automatons, you will face more devastators instead of other enemy types. Now that's either odd or interesting because I feel like that was a problem prior. So I don't know if they're talking about that now it's going to be better. But when a bot drop came in, sometimes they would drop like five or six rocket devastators and two shield devastators. So now are they going to be dropping more? I'm not sure, but that also needs to be tested. Another huge one is that they have improved the system that prevents hell pod steering close to large or important objectives. Even if you have the upgrade in your ship, you ever feel like your hell pod control was taken away from you when dropping down and you just wanted to land on a bio titan or charger? Well, apparently they have solved that. So it says we have solved issues where the effective area around objects was a lot larger than intended. They have also reduced the number of objects that prevented hell pod steering. So they have a note saying that this system is intended to prevent soft locks when players can drop on important interaction points or drop into unintended places. So they will continue to monitor the state of the system after the update to see if the additional tweaks are necessary. And then finally, they list they fix cases where the ground under some assets could be bombed, causing them to float. They also have the ballistic shield that has been changed, which I think absolutely needed this change, but let me read it to you. It says the collision mass has been slightly increased in the size for more quote unquote forgiveness. They changed the shield's poses so that less of the Helldiver is exposed, and finally addressed a bug where part of the Helldiver would still be vulnerable when using the shield in first person. Now, previously, I called the Ballistic Shield a straight-up meme thing to use because it really felt like you were still getting shot by the things that you were supposed to be blocking. Things from a slight melee attack, even laser blasts, eventually hit the Helldiver, even if you crouch in both third and first person. And to me, it made the thing completely useless to use. I'd rather just take the energy shield instead. So seeing this change is hopefully good and it puts the ballistic shield in a spot where it needs to be. That way you can bring it to fight those automatons and have someone tank for you. They also fixed something for the tutorial. It says invisible collision partly blocking the doorway leading to the launch pad in the tutorial. Cool, I never experienced that, but good, good find, I suppose. And in closing, they now talk about the known issues that still persist in the game. The first one listed is the game might crash when picking up a snowball or throwing back an enemy grenade. So at this point, avoid the snowballs and try to just run away from an enemy grenade that's thrown at you, which is unfortunate because sometimes you can just pick it right back and throw it into an objective fabricator. But for the time being, just avoid them. There's still some issues involving friend invites and cross-play. So cross-platform friend invites may not show up in the friend request tab. Players cannot unfriend other players befriended via friend code. Players cannot unblock players that were not in the friends list beforehand and players cannot befriend players with Steam names shorter than three characters. That's an odd one. They also list that explosive weapon stats include only direct hit damage, but not explosive damage themselves. So keep that in mind. They may be doing some additional splash damage past that. And right now, explosions do not break your limbs, except when you're flying into a rock. So I guess they want an explosion to break our limbs. So that's fun. Another weird one says planet liberation reaches 100% at the end of every defend mission. And also apparently drowning in deep water with a vitality booster equipped puts hell divers in a broken state. So I guess kind of avoid swimming. Stratagem B might attach itself to an enemy, but will deploy in its original location, which I've seen constantly. Not only have I thrown a 500 kilogram bomb or supply pack on a charger's butt, hoping to crush it or blow it up as it runs, only to find it deployed in the original spot where it landed. So still a problem and I guess it works on it and finally some player customizations like title or body type may still reset after restarting the game and there we have it those were all the massive changes that happened in this patch let me know what is your favorite let me know what you're disappointed in and also let me know what you hope they change in the future but other than that thank you so much for stopping by and choosing to watch this video i'm drifter from downloadable content subscribe if you're new but other than that i will see you on the battlefield spreading democracy